Finally one. I think that for coloring dragon I will be using polychromos pencils. And before I started to color I already have in mind three color combos and I think that possibly all three of them will look good together with this background. But of course I have to decide. And in such cases, when I am not completely sure which colors I want to use. Usually I select several pencils from the color range which I have in mind for the object and I try to select both light and dark colors, so I got some kind of color range pencils for the lightest, for the middle tone and for the dark tones. But sometimes it's not very helpful when I just put selected pencils to the picture. I'm still not sure. So as a first choice I have here sanguine, red car carmine, burnt ochre and Indian red pencils. But I'm still not sure that it's the best choice. Possibly the second choice will be better. I already put some turquoise color to the branches and maybe I have to use similar blue-green colors for the dragon. And besides, I always love blue-green colors. So again, I have here colors from the lightest to the darkest ones. But for me it's not easy to make a color choice when I just have pencils close to the picture. So in such cases I do color swatches. Sometimes I even cut piece of paper in the size and in the shape of the object which I want to color and I roughly color it with colors I'm, I want to test and I just put it on top of my picture. But I think that for today I will be quite satisfied with simple color swatches. Now when I apply first color swatch to the background I am not happy. I don't think that it will be a best choice. So blue and green colors look more promising. Apart from these two color palettes I also thought about doing a white dragon with a very pale blue-green shadows. And I thought about using one of my available Copic Chao in very pale blue-green colors for the shading. I think that maybe I will start from this marker and I will see how it will go. Anyway, I will be able to put a brighter color on top of it at any moment. I started to apply this color very lightly, just to indicate where I will be doing shadows. And I think that maybe I will do white dragon next time. It's an interesting idea and I definitely want to have at least one picture with white dragon, but maybe not this time. I definitely want something brighter. And besides, this video, this coloring is my first attempt to work with my temporary borrowed camera. If you hadn't seen my latest vlog video, where I talked about my broken camera and that now I have to work with camera which I borrowed and which I am not very familiar I think that I will be able to get at least decent quality and all colors will look realistic and color balance, white balance and contrast balance, everything will be not bad. I have to confess that I wasn't very creative while I was coloring this dragon. It was because of my disappointment and a little bit of stress due to my broken camera and I wasn't sure about quality of this video and you know that it's hard 
to be sure and with coloring you don't have a second chance if you film something like flip through of the coloring book or coloring book review you can make another flip through another chance and with coloring process you can't have a second chance so you have to be sure in your quality so i was a little bit nervous and before doing this video i already made maybe 10 or 20 attempts about deciding which um, video settings i have to use so it was a little bit stressful in the beginning anyway i will try to answer another questions relating to my coloring coloring process and first question is do you prefer to color in silence or listening to some music there is no way i can color in silence i have to listen to music or sometimes i love to listen to some documentary and preferably historical ones or i can listen to historical podcasts you know that i love history so everything related to history will be a good choice when i'm color i can't listen to the audiobooks i definitely prefer to read by myself of course i prefer paper books but i also can uh, read electronic books but definitely not listening to them i'm always not happy with voices so i think that the wrong voices can ruin for me the whole story so educational or historical documentaries or music are much better choice for me and fun thing that quite often i select music connecting with the subject which i color quite often when i color christmas pictures i start to listen christmas music even in november or even in july or june if i decide to do christmas in july coloring also when i color dragons i can listen to celtic or irish or scottish music so i try to maintain and to feed the spirit next question is do you like to do coloring according to the season holiday for example christmas or halloween or you prefer a random picture choice and it doesn't depend from the season or holiday i definitely love to color according to the season and i love to do christmas colorings i already started to put pictures connected to winter and to christmas to my plan to do list for the late november and december so i definitely a person who is affected by season i even selected pictures from maria trolle or leila duly books according to the season so daffodils and tulips during springtime or dahlia during summertime and by the way the same thing goes to my cross stitching during spring period i started to stitch tulips and lilacs and peonies and for winter time i always do a lot of christmas stitching to prepare christmas ornaments so seasons always affected my coloring and other hobbies next question is coloring landscapes or flowers the easiest thing for me is to color flowers first of all because i can find some reference pictures on google you know that i prefer to color as realistic as possible so i always use pictures i look at basic colors at which colors nature use for shading and of course it's much easier and for landscapes 
for doing them properly. You have to have much more artist knowledge. How to properly do perspective, how color changes according to the weather. And when I color landscapes, it's not as easy to find uh, reference pictures. So I have to use my imagination, my creativity. So it's more challenging, but not as easy as coloring flowers. So maybe uh, for stepping out of my comfort zone, landscapes is more interesting and flowers are easier to color. And frankly, these two subjects are my favorite parts. I love both landscapes and flowers. Next question is soft or hard pencils? Or maybe I, it's better to ask softer or harder? Because I definitely don't like very hard pencils like Dermot Artists or Prismacolor Veritins. And in this question I wanted to compare slightly softer pencils like Prismacolors and slightly harder pencils like Polychromoses. And this question is also connected to which one I do prefer, oil-based or wax-based pencils. When I just started to use Prismacolors, I thought that they will be always my first and only choice. I do love soft pencils. I think that they are much easier and quicker to use. They are more suitable for paper in almost any coloring books, but now when I use my polychromoses more and more, I started to realize that maybe pictures colored with polychromoses look a little bit more interesting and complicated. And it's because here when we use a transparent pigment like we have in oil-based pencils, we can see bigger variety of different subtle color changes, color hues, color shades. Uh, just like this, I used quite similar colors of the pencils, but still I can see green and blue-green and clear blue pencils here and later I also added a little bit of violet. And I love that colors subtle go one into another and I can see one color under the other. And that's all because polychromoses are slightly harder and more transparent. I don't think that with Prisma colors I can get these subtle color changes. I do love both Prismacolors and Polychromoses, so I think that I will be using them both in equal parts in my future colorings. It's just like um, Polychromoses are more challenging for me, but final result maybe is more gratifying. Another reason why soft pencils sometimes aren't the best choice is when we have a very hot weather like we have here in Kiev now more than 30 degrees it's extremely hard to color with prismas they are feeling like they are oil pastels they crumble very quickly they are totally not able to maintain a, a nice thin tip and when I color in books with smooth paper, like in my Croatian edition of Zemla Snova, coloring with melted Prisma colors result in getting quite dirty and not very tidy result. So I definitely have to switch to polychromoses during a very hot summer here in Kyiv. But I think that maybe I will try and test putting my Prismas in my fridge for some time and to froze them. 
And I think the last question for today will be about my preferences in coloring book qualities. I definitely prefer one-sided to double-sided coloring books just because it allows me to use all mediums I want to and I don't have to limit myself with mediums and thinking about bleeding through. But still, uh, now I started to use my alcohol-based markers again and even if here for example, I have only small pictures on the back side. I am still concerned that I have stains from alcohol-based markers. I don't know why, but I am not very comfortable with those stains on the back side. When I flip through all my books and I want to look at my already finished pictures, I think that maybe double-sided books look better like a real books so i'm still not 100 percent sure in my preferences the only thing is that paper quality if paper is thin the definitely book have to be one-sided and if paper is thick like we have in dutch editions of hannah carlson for example even Double-sided pages are perfect for coloring and I think that I am not against double-sided books if paper is thick. Next aspect is perforated or non-perforated pages. And I totally hate perforated pages. You know that I prefer to keep my pictures, my finished projects in book. I don't like to tear them away, so I am not very comfortable when pages started to fall out of coloring books and I am not happy with my coloring book about Paris, coloring book by Isia Cho, because pages already started to fall out and I am afraid of losing them. Frankly, I don't know any advantages of perforation in coloring book. I don't know any person who would like to tear page and to give it away somehow, finished or non-finished. So I don't know why we need this perforation. If I have a desperate need to pull picture from the book, I can use my knife and to cut it but problems with perforation are much bigger than advantages of this perforation. So I totally against it. I hope that it's all for today with questions. I just wanted to explain that after I finished to color dragon, I used black polychromos and 90% French grey prisma color to slightly darken area around the dragon and such darkening and shading always help the main object to pop up on the background. And I think that adding white acrylic paint also helped this dragon not to be lost on the quite bright background. I thank you for watching and if I finally get used to my temporary camera, I will see you very soon.